IFSC Investors Protection Fund. Hello and welcome. You're watching Financial Plan, and over the next half an hour, we'll tell you about those various instruments that uh, help you save tax. And given that in the next couple of weeks, uh, most of us will be scrambling for ways and means to save that tax. Uh, to talk about that, Dr. Renu Putin of uh, Fund Supermart joins in. Thanks, Renu, for joining in this evening. Renu, in the next. Uh, couple of weeks, I would say we're all going to be scrambling, finding ways and means to save tax because, of course, it'll be a financial year. And what are the various instruments that are available? And I'm asking you this, I know, weeks in advance, only to avoid the last-minute uh, investment decisions that most of us make in order to save tax. So what is available under what section and what can one be looking at? Uh, uh, under section uh, ATC, you have uh, certain uh, instruments like you have the PPF is there, where the lock-in period is like for 15 years, and uh, the interest is uh, uh, you know they uh, fix it like on April 1st every year. Currently, it's at 8.8 uh, percent, and. Uh, uh, the minimum amount that you can invest is uh, rupees 500 and the maximum is 1 lakh. Uh, then you have a national savings certificate uh, where uh, you have a tenure of uh, 5 years and 10 years as well. Okay, and uh, lock-in is <coughs> 5 and 10 years and uh, interest rate is uh, fixed for them. Of course, it's subject, uh, interest earned is subject to tax. Then uh, you have uh, the bank's uh, uh, fixed deposits, mm -hmm. uh, tax saving deposits. Uh, there also uh, uh, the interest earned is subject to tax and there you can maximum investment limit is uh, mm -hmm. 1 lakh. Yeah, that's uh, one thing. Uh, then you this can is all on the section 80C, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, then uh, you have, uh, then I have uh, ELSS schemes are there. Uh, in the ELSS schemes, like I spoke, uh, where the lock-in period is uh, three years uh, and uh, it uh, invests into equity markets, uh, dividends are tax-free and there's no capital gains tax as well, the time of maturity. Then you have ULIPs uh, as well coming under this section. Right. Is that all we have in the section 80C? Yeah. And then you have the, yeah, most of them. Covered. Also, what happens if, uh, you know, people have a housing loan, do they still need to go out there and make those investments or do they already get uh, tax saving benefits? Okay, right. Uh, just also, just to move on from there, anything else that comes outside this radar, so anything apart from debt and equity that one could look at? Oh, the upper limit that we need to... Oh, we have this uh, Rajiv Gandhi uh, <coughs> tax saving scheme that's been launched uh, by the government recently. Uh, so there, uh, any uh, anyone who's having an income below 10 lakh and who's a first-time investor into equity uh, equities can consider the scheme. So the maximum amount of deduction is uh, 25,000 or 50% uh, of uh, the invested amount, whichever is lower. Well, that is, of course, uh, various ways that one can look at saving tax uh, come the year and what about post office and all of that those are also schemes that uh, yeah you have a uh, senior saving uh, yeah, senior citizens uh, well us, so. a senior citizen saving scheme that comes in the in, uh, section ATC where the as I said uh, the senior citizens can save there and the maximum limit uh, that he can invest is 15 lakhs but the uh, tax deduction will be available up to 1 lakh only right uh, just moving on from that uh, how does one if you talk and I'm going to break this down and I'll talk about mutual funds specifically how does one determine what mutual fund is most suited or most appropriately suited for an investor? Uh, normally when we talk to investors, the uh, the parameter that they mostly uh, refer to is the performance. That's the thing that retail investors normally look at. But when we select uh, mutual funds, we look at a lot of other parameters, like performance definitely is one of the important factors. Uh, we uh, then look at uh, how the funds have performed uh, during volatile markets, you know, how they've been, whether they've been uh, able to maintain the downside or not. Or whether they've been like uh, not being able to perform at all uh, actually limit the downside uh, then uh, we also look at uh, the pedigree of the fund house definitely uh, the uh, the expense ratio of the funds is another factor that we look into. Uh, we look at the fund manager's uh, strategy of managing the fund, uh, whether they uh, uh, whether they actively uh, ch uh, you know uh, churn the fund or whether they hold a buy and hold strategy, and uh, the total assets of the fund. We look at the investment theme of the fund because, like for example, if you say uh, you're an infrastructure fund and then you have an exposure into an FMCG uh, stock, you know, then that's a good for us because uh, I wouldn't like I mean I wouldn't want an infrastructure mm. fund to take an exposure into a uh, uh, theme like an FMCG I have FMCG funds in the market so these are 
several parameters that we run through before we finally put the uh, fund on the table and see this is the best. Also, when you talk about performance, usually past performance, I know that's the only thing that we have to determine what a fund is going to do in the future, but very rarely do funds that have been top performing funds in the last few years continue to be top performing funds. So how, how does that divide really play out? Because you can't always, be, I mean, every year there's a different fund that's a number one fund. So how does one decide the importance of this? Uh, past performance is definitely not the only way to look at funds. I mean, you have to uh, look at other things. You have to look at the potential of the fund to deliver good returns in the future. That's why I said you'll have to actually go into the portfolio. You'll have to see what is the kind of strategy that the fund manager is following. Is he stick What kind of stocks is he picking up? What are the sectoral calls that is he, is he, uh, that he's taking? It's like how you analyze equities. You'll have to actually dwell deeper because future potential is very important when I recommend the fund. Mm. If uh, it's, It can't be just on the past performance because you never know whether it will perform well next year as well. That's why when you look at our list, you don't see much changes. Yeah. It's almost the same. How crucial is the fund manager's investment, investing style important? So if he's too aggressive and your risk profile is obviously a lot more cautious, would you avoid that? I would definitely. I mean, if uh, it's like uh, an invest, uh, invest uh, fund manager is putting into like uh, majorities into small caps, so you know, then I might have a concern. Like if you look at an infrastructure fund, uh, if the investment exposure is into small caps uh, more, then I'll have a concern in that fund. There are some invest, uh, some fund managers who churn their portfolio more often than others. Is that a concern for you? Uh, there are. Uh, uh, it's definitely a concern, and we keep that on the radar. We see how is he managing because active management can cause a lot of volatility in returns. Yeah. And that, uh, of course, when the markets perform, those funds will also perform very well. I mean, they'll be able to outperform. But I will suggest those funds only to those kind of investors who can take that kind of volatility risk. What about the fact that uh, some funds might be very volatile? volatile returns. So you might have years where you have outstanding returns and then you might have years that the returns are negligible or underperforming even the benchmark. I know the CAGR would work out in favor of such funds but I mean is that what you look at? Do you look at a CAGR or do you look at an annual return of the fund before you go out there and put money on it? Because consistency I guess goes over uh, just good returns. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, talk in the market that we need to, when an investor select a fund, he needs to look at whether it's been able to beat the benchmark or not. I think that it should be able to beat the benchmark definitely on one side and it should also be able to be, uh, its performance should be better relative to the other funds in the category. I mean, look at the CGR returns, but that's not my only criterion for selecting funds. Right, you know when you have... Uh, I guess, say you've invested in a fund and the fund gets taken over by another fund, which we had last year. What happens in a situation like that? Do investors then flee away from the new fund or the takeover company that's taken over the fund or do you stay invested? Uh, but regarding the last year's instance, my recommendation to investors has been to stay invested. Do it out. Yeah, because uh, we saw some potential in the in the change in the fund management team that happened in its side. Uh, we saw new fund managers joining, uh, and uh, which which looked promising. So I've still told uh, investors to hold on to the investments, and then we take a call early how, on. How much importance would you give to a, a fund's ratings? Uh, I normally don't look at the funds ratings um, given by other uh, agencies. agencies, yeah. Even if, it's, uh, even if it's up and available for... No, I recommend uh, funds depending on the model that we have. We have several filters. So depending on that, I would recommend. What happens to funds that are extremely popular? Because usually it's herd mentality. And a lot of us get carried away because if everyone's investing, for example, in an HDFC top 200, it's just herd mentality. You probably would not even go back into your homework, but just buy into it because you know the fund manager, you've heard of him, there's great legacy there and everyone seems to be getting into that fund. Is that okay for an investor to follow herd mentality because, I mean, or could that be sort of counterproductive? Yeah, I think uh, in the uh, in the example that you've uh, currently given, uh, herd mentality, a uh, top 200 or an HDFZ equity is there in every investor's portfolio. Yeah. I mean, you, they don't need any analysis. I mean, yeah. you close your eyes and put money. But I think one thing that investors should uh, look at is same funds from the same fund or same fund manager, overlapping portfolios. I mean, what's the need of getting into the same so funds? Yeah. So I wouldn't go with the, I wouldn't suggest my investors to go with the herd mentality. 
Right, and also, uh, what about expense ratio? How important is that in the decision-making process? Uh, expense ratio is definitely important as far as returns are concerned, and definitely uh, we give a good uh, weightage to that in our model uh, before we finally recommending the funds. Right, uh, that's the advice coming in for uh, everyone who's looking to make those investments in mutual funds. Lots of aspects to keep in mind, and of course, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to be scrambling to get your tax saving uh, done. So those instruments, as well as we mentioned on the show, could be of some help to you. We'll take a break on that now. We'll come back and take some up, take some of your financial planning queries. So stay tuned. Financial planner presented by BSC Investors Print Fund. Welcome back. You're watching Financial Planner, and we'll now take some of your financial planning queries up. Investment Ladder presented by BSC Investors Protection Fund. Remember, there's a query coming in from Rakesh, and he says he's investing in the SPI Life Smart Performer. It's a ULIP that requires him to pay a premium of rupees fifty thousand annually for five years. After two years. The value of his investment in this ULIP is around 92,000 rupees. What should he do? Uh, SBI Life Smart Performer is a, util, uh, is a ULIP which actually uh, guarantees highest NAV during the last seven years or higher than highest NAV. That's what he's saying. Uh, as far as uh, if he wants to exit uh, this policy, it, uh, he'll have to look at the charges that's involved and then take the appropriate steps because if you actually uh, read through the uh, uh, yeah, offer document to prospectus, you can see that uh, if you want to uh, withdraw this entire amount, you'll have to put it, uh, the money goes into a discontinued policy fund. It will stay there and it will earn a uh, rate of interest of whatever the savings bank uh, account of an SBI is giving, that's around 4%. It will lie there till your uh, lock-in period is over, that's 5 years. So you will get it only after that uh, period. So think about all the procedures and then take the appropriate We've course. got a query coming in from Vishal Seth who says he's got 5 lakhs available at this point of time. He's 43. The money is available for the long term and where should he put this money to get maximum benefits? He's a first time investor. 5 lakh investments uh, uh, he can consider putting into a uh, mutual fund. Okay, Since he's a first time investor I would suggest that he can divide the corpus between uh, large cap funds such as an ICC focus blue chip fund or uh, DSP top 100 or uh, he can even consider uh, balance funds like an HDFC Prudence Fund or an HDFC Balance Fund. Uh, HDFC Prudence is a very aggressive fund while HDFC Balance is for conservative investors. Um, uh, I wouldn't suggest him to invest entire FILAC right now into the equity markets. He can go in a staggered way either through the SIP route or through the STP route. Reno is also 43 years of age, so I'm guessing his risk profile is not very aggressive. So does it make sense to put all that 5 lakh rupees into equities because he's not specifically saying that he wants to put that money into equities? Okay. Uh, and when I'm giving him the equity space, I've also given him the balance funds as yes, well. And what should be the sort of uh, asset allocation? Should he be still putting 70% of his money into equities given he's 43? Uh, I'm not suggesting a 70% uh, kind of an uh, uh, you know advice here. That's what I said. Initially, you can start investing into the large caps and even balanced. And how much of that 5 lakh should be going into equities then? Uh, currently, you can start with 30-40% uh, and okay. then uh, decide how he wants to take it on. I mean, he can move it into debt funds. So I can answer that only well if I know exactly the risk profile of this investor. Yeah. Also, assuming that um, this is 5 lakh rupees, uh, not assuming it is 5 lakh rupees, should he be looking at a lump sum investment or should he again do it in a staggered way? Should it be an SIP? Should it be an STP? What, what should one be looking to do? First time investor into mutual funds, I wouldn't suggest a lump sum investor. Uh, lump sum so should investment. that money be seen in an FT before it goes into? Yeah. If he can start it as an S, uh, SIP or uh, into the mutual funds or he can do an STP from a debt fund into an equity fund. What do you recommend he should do? Uh, the best option in uh, is SIP for him. So monthly he can, yeah. Keep it through an STP, keep it in an FT yeah. and then Every move on to an Every month he can move on no, to this fund. And what sort of uh, monthly SIP amount should he be looking at? Um, it will depend upon how he wants to uh, invest. Okay. Well, we've got another query coming from Vidisha Maria, and she says, uh, rather, he says he's got, uh, I have a monthly income of 35,000 rupees. I can save up to 5,000 per month. Can you suggest a ret an investment ideology to get a return of 1 crore after 10 years? Also, how do I invest this monthly savings? Currently, my monthly savings are all lying in my bank savings account. 
Okay, if you want to get one crore after 10 years, then uh, assuming a rate of 10% uh, return, you'll have to invest at least 48,000, uh, which is currently not possible. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, the current investment that you're looking at is 5,000. So I would suggest that uh, 3,000 can go into a large cap fund like an ICSA focused blue chip fund and the rest 2,000 can go into a balanced fund like an HDFC balanced. Then as your income increases, you can start increasing the exposure into different categories of funds. And this would, would you then stay with equities as well, increase your exposure to equities yeah, as you go along? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, we'll take a break on that and we'll come back and take some more with your financial planning query, so stay tuned. Financial Planner, presented by BSC, Investors Protection Fund. Welcome back. You're watching Financial Planner. Really, we've got a query coming from a 36-year-old gentleman. He says, um, suggest the most mutual funds for my portfolio and how much money should I invest to get a decent return in 15 years? Should I invest through an SIP or do a lump sum investment? Okay, uh, this investor has not told us about the risk profile that he's looking at, but uh, I mean, if if you're if he's an aggressive kind of an investor, uh, in today's market, I would uh, suggest around 20% of his fund can go into large cap funds like a Franklin India Blue Chip or an ICSA focused Blue Chip. 20% can go into multi caps like UTI Opportunities Fund or IDFC Premier Equity Fund. 30% I would suggest that it goes into mid cap funds like uh, Sterling Equity or an H. HDFC uh, Mid-Cap Opportunities Fund, 10% uh, are into a sectoral fund like a Pine Bridge Infrastructure and Economic Reform Fund and the rest 20% uh, you can uh, put it into a debt fund like Templeton's uh, uh, Income Builder uh, account. So that's an income fund. Uh, whether he needs to put this uh, through SIP or a lump sum investment, I would definitely suggest uh, uh, SIP kind of investment because lump sum is that kind of in, uh, investment for investors who can actually uh, note down the opportunities in the market, see when the market is actually falling and then, you know, take an exposure. You can't invest a lump sum today at, uh, you know, this level of... Uh, of you have to note, I mean, you have to track the market every day, which is not something a retail investor will find it easy to do. So it's better to go through an SIP where every month, uh, you know, uh, you put the fixed amount and uh, there's no, uh, you don't have to take any tension, like how the markets are going to be. Right. We've got another query from Pradeep Sharma. He's 25 years old and earns 70,000 a month. He wants to invest in equities. His near-term goals are to buy a car next year for 6 lakh rupees, a flat in Bangalore for 30 lakhs as his budget in two years' time. He wants to give his retired parents 10,000 rupees a month, but at least rupees 35,000 is available for investment, keeping that out. I, he says he already owns a property in his hometown gifted to him by his parents. He has gold ETFs worth 3 lakh rupees, which he can sell to buy the flat. He's not pro married and probably won't be for another three years. He's got no other investments as yet, and he was prepaying a bike and education loan with a considerably low salary. What percentage of his investment should be for the near term and how much should be for the long term? Uh, it's a very tricky question because uh, 35,000 per year, okay, if you invest uh, for the next one year and I'm uh, taking a 10% rate, uh, he would get around uh, 4 lakh uh, 39 uh, uh, thousand okay and uh, if uh, 35,000 is invested for next so two years. So stock for 35,000 for the month? Yeah. He said he's owning 70,000. 35,000 per month. Yeah. He's going to invest for yeah. the next one year. Yeah. Yeah. So he should be uh, getting around 4 lakhs. Okay. Okay. After a year. Okay. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. And after one year, he should, uh, like uh, uh, after two years, he should be getting around nine lakhs. Right. So that will not uh, be able to achieve any of his uh, goals. Yeah. And uh, for the next one or two years, I wouldn't uh, suggest uh, equity fund for him because uh, we don't know how markets are going to mm. be. And uh, these, these are like for buying a house and all that. So w uh, what I have for him for the next one, one plus years is a Billa Dynamic uh, Fund or he can look at a Canada Rubico Income Fund. Uh, uh, then he is asked how much should I keep for long term and uh, short, short term. term. See, uh, short term, it depends upon the income that you have and, uh, uh, you know, your expenses and the savings that you have. So, currently, I think with the current saving, he's not, uh, he will not be able to even meet his near term goals. He possibly could buy his car. Would that be possible? Maybe that could, the rest of it could be financed. Yeah, today, right? he can buy the car maybe, but uh, not the other goal, uh, goal of buying the property and... 
That's pretty much yeah. all the goal is, is yeah. buying a house. Okay. So I think he'll have to, a long term goal, for the long term goal, he'll have to increase his uh, investment amount and then keep a, you know, make a special portfolio for retirement corpus. Right. Okay. That's the advice coming in for you, Pradeep. Uh, you could buy your car pretty clearly. You've got that 4 lakh rupees that you'll earn uh, or gain at the year end and you've got that gold ETF that you would like to sell as well. So I think that, uh, I think the car should be okay because that should suffice it. Well, moving on from there, we've got a question from Vishal Srivastava who writes in from Mumbai. He wishes to invest in lesser known commodities. What would be the best option? Can I do so using my DMAT account is what he asked. He already has three SIPs of 15 rupees each in large cap funds apart from insurance and inherited property. Does investing in commodities make sense? He's 27 years old and earns 40,000 rupees a month. Okay, uh, investing as commodities uh, is definitely a good option since he's uh, very young also. But I would suggest that if you don't have the expertise, you know, to invest in commodities, then it's better not to go for that. Uh, instead of that, he can he already has investments in mutual funds. So I would suggest that, and he's quite young as well. So I would suggest that maybe he can, along with his large cap exposure that is mentioned, uh, he can take some of the exposures into the mid cap and the uh, sectoral space. You know, mid cap funds like. Uh, HDFC mid cap opportunities or uh, IDFC sterling equity fund or uh, uh, multi caps like UTR opportunities fund or premium equity fund or even sectoral funds like a reliance banking or a pine bids infrastructure fund. So I think it's better to divert into the equity funds and uh, rather than get into commodities. Investment ladder presented by BSC Investors Protection Fund. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Financial Planner. Thanks for watching. The Financial Planner, presented by BSC Investors Protection Fund.